So at some point next week, um, something really big is going to happen. Like history is going to kind of go. Pow. Uh, uh, former president of the United States is going to be arraigned on um, the charges that are alleged of um, falsification of business records could be a campaign campaign finance violation if they decide to get I'm going to get a little arcane here if they decide to tie in the federal part of that crime they're alleging and uh, the former president's going to be fingerprinted and mugshotted and walked into a courtroom to enter a plea which is why talking to his lawyer Joe Tacopina right now is really really important and he is live with me now so Joe I have heard you had your a reaction that the, the president was shocked you were shocked you learned this from the New York Times has the president said anything further uh, since his initial reaction to hearing uh, about the indictment in Manhattan not really, Ashley. I mean, he's ready to go. He's ready to fight. I mean, he's, you know, obviously was very upset and shocked. And um, I was shocked. We were, we were all shocked because even though we'd heard and, and there were rumors and, you know, all this, we just believe at the end of the day, rule of law would have prevailed. And, you know, there there is no crime. That, actually, it's not even a bad act here, let alone a crime. And I've spoken to three former FEC chairmen, Federal Election Committee chairmen, who have, who have echoed that sentiment. I don't know how they think they're going to prevail in this case. They won't. They won't. But it's just, it's gotten to the point where it, it, this clearly is weaponization of the political, of the justice system for political purposes. And and it's it makes me really, as a lawyer, it makes me sad. And as a lawyer for the person who's being victimized, it makes me angry. So you, I am guessing, are probably not a whole lot different than me in that the indictment is sealed, so you don't know what's in it, but we are hearing upwards of 30 charges. Are you assuming, with that limited information, that this is about each check that Michael exactly. Cohen wrote to Stormy Daniels, so each one of those represents um, a charge? I guess so. I guess so. Again, I don't know how they think that equates to a crime. This is a federal election. Federal campaign laws are, are in effect. Ashley, it's very simple. These were these these civil settlement, which is done every day in every law office in, in, in New York, um, was done with personal funds, not with campaign funds, with with company or personal funds, not campaign funds. That's the distinguishing factor. Um, not like John Edwards, where he had a donor pay. This was a, a, a confidentiality agreement settlement, which happens all the time with personal funds. And the bright line test for that, statutory law for that, for election violations is, was the payment made irrespective of the campaign? Was it made irrespective of the candidacy? And obviously the answer is yes. Even Michael Cohen, when he, you know, came to Jesus and pled guilty and decided uh, you know, he was going to be a truth teller, even though I don't think he knows how to do that. Um, he said it was in part to prevent personal embarrassment for the president and his family. That takes it out of the realm of campaign finance violation. And, and, and so listen, can you, Joe, can you, can you talk FEC, a little bit about that? That comes from three FEC chairmen. So yeah, can you talk sure. a little bit about that with me? Because I know you've had personal conversations, obviously, with the president about this. What does he say about the personal embarrassment then? And now, because he's still married to Melania, what has his reaction been? Because that's what I'm assuming the defense is going to be, right? It's that he didn't want to embarrass himself in front of his wife as opposed to affect the, the voters. And you tell me if I'm wrong in that, in that thinking. I, of course that is. That's, in fact, the case. By the way, let me be clear, Ashley. So what's he, he said? Adamantly he adamantly denies. He adamantly denies he had to spare. Adamantly. But by the way, Stormy Daniels wrote two letters in which she attested to the fact that she did not have a sexual relationship with Donald Trump. So, you know, I mean, in this case is built on on literally serial um, liars or people who haven't told the same story twice. And it's 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 an unbelievable situation that the first indictment of a former president of the United States of America is going to be held based on the words of two people who have told wildly inconsistent stories. I mean, beyond wildly inconsistent and based on a, 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 a payment of a, a legal civil settlement of a case, um, which had no ramifications for the campaign finance laws in the federal government um, and the federal. So this ends up being statutes. litigated. So because you're, you're so good at your job. Um, if this ends up being litigated, I can't wait to see you at work. Um, uh, uh, if the me, president me said Look, I'm, I'm he did 
Go ahead, Ash. I'm oh, sorry. Well, hold on. I got, I got a tough one for you. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. If the president said I didn't even have an affair with her, Donald Trump's not the kind of person who goes quietly. Um, and, you know, a, a hush money thing for something he didn't do doesn't sound like him. And I feel like that's going to raise its head in this case if that's his what? defense. Meaning that's you, not, he's no, that's... not the kind of person who would hush. He would loudly proclaim her to be a liar and tell Melania that, too, and tell the public that as well. So why all of a sudden this different tack, this different strategy from the from the president to pay hush money to someone he didn't have an affair with, if that's so the, defense. There's two answers two answer to that question. Let me get to the, the, the real answer to that question, and then we'll talk about the ramifications. The real answer is Michael Cohen and, and Stormy Daniels' former lawyer, this guy Davidson, who was initially arrested by the FBI for trying to extort Hulk Hogan, um, worked out a deal. So the president wasn't part of that deal, wasn't a part of that deal. Michael Cohen signed the settlement agreement, which I've never heard of, and and and... Stormy Daniels and his her lawyer signed it. That was the initial instant. And then Cohen went and said, I resolved this situation. I didn't want this to come out. Embarrass your wife, embarrass your kids. And and at this point, the settlement was done. But let me make something very clear. Whether he did or didn't have a, a relationship with our one night stand, even though he adamantly denies it, and so has she. But even if even if he did, it doesn't change the fact that that is not a crime. There is civil settlements in these sort of cases every day. They're consensual relationships, allegedly, and when their cases are settled, their confidentiality agreements that are done, it happens all the time. And honestly, for the amount he paid for a man of his stature, it's like me paying $5. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the accounting, it's, it's it's the that, accounting that, that will be the issue, and I think that's where you know the, but, the DA but there is coming out at the president, to file right? something, Ashley. There has so, to be something. And that's what I'm curious about. To file. Uh, I, I agree with a lot of the analysts who say that there are a lot of pitfalls in this case, especially if the underlying Oof. misdemeanor is connected to a federal campaign finance, finance violation, because then you're like mix matching state and federal issues. Exactly. So it could get a little messy. Exactly. But let me ask you this. Exactly. The lawyer for Stormy Daniels, Clark Brewster, um, gave this comment today, and I want to get your response to it. Uh, Clark said this, the indictment of Donald Trump is no cause for joy. The hard work and conscientiousness of the grand jurors must be respected. Now let truth and justice prevail. No one is above the law. What's your reaction to Clark Brewster and Stormy Daniels, Joe? I could really care less what Stormy Daniels has to say about the president's indictment or what her lawyer has to say. I mean, you know, the second they came out of the grand juror, they didn't even testify in the grand juror. The second they came out of the DA's office, they, helped, they tweeted and held press conferences. I mean, it's so pathetic that, the, you know, this case was in the press every day because Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, Stormy Daniels' lawyer, went out there and announced exactly what was happening inside the grand jury. I mean, the DA is had, oh, any normal DA would be mortified by that and understand that the pathological need for media attention is a real problem for the credibility of witnesses. So, you know, she's written books, he's written books, everyone's writing a book. She said something completely opposite to that, you know, twice in letters. So either she's a liar then or a liar now. Michael Cohen hasn't told the truth. I, I, I wouldn't know what that, what that word even meant if it hit him in the head. I mean, he was convicted of seven crimes, lying to banks, lying to the IRS, Lying, you know, regarding his tax medallions, lying to Congress. I mean, the guy is. Hey, Joe. Is, is, is can a I ask you just logistics? Yeah. Because I was so interested yeah. to hear you. You learned of this today from The New York Times, not from the DA's office. But there's a Tuesday court date on the docket in front of jo uh, Judge Juan uh, uh, Marchand. And I'm okay. wondering if you have now been told that. And I've got 10 seconds left. But do you have logistics ready to go or you haven't even started? You know, we did not. We have nothing ready to go because we're still waiting on, okay. on, on how the logistics are going to play out, Ashley. Okay. Joe Tacopina, I can't thank you enough. I know you're driving, so I do appreciate yeah, yeah. you jumping on the Sorry phone with me. And I was, was a big, well, we would have planned something better. It was a big surprise. We'll get yeah, you on I, when uh, I we know more. I was this, so, okay. I so appreciate it. I'll have you on, let's say, when as soon as we know more about this, we'll do a, a more a better face-to-face. -face. Thanks, Joe Tacopina. Absolutely, Ashley. Okay, bye-bye.